Hello, everyone. Once again, uh, thank you for having me here. And uh, in the second round of uh, talks, we're going to go back to the same topic that uh, we discussed before. There was the uh, use of percutaneous mitral valve clips for mitral valve repair. And um, we're going to take it, take the concept that we've uh, discussed before and dive into two um, uh, real cases. Um, I have a few disclosures. Um, I received speakers honorarium from Abbott, and uh, we are a reference center for Philips, and therefore uh, all of our images are from Philips platforms. So as I said, we're going <clears> to <throat> present two cases, and we start with our first case. There was um, a 77 years old gentleman with uh, uh, idiopathic cardiomyopathy and uh, a <clears throat> decreased eject left ventricular ejection fraction that was previously measured as 30%, chronic atrial fibrillation, chronic renal insufficiency, and um, severe mitral regurgitation with uh, New York Heart Association 3. As we started the exam, you can appreciate here, you can see a four chamber view, and you can appreciate there's some pericardial effusion. And that's very important to identify at the beginning of a case like this, because uh, <clears throat> we can definitely, with a clip and with our catheter, cause pericardial effusion. So we want to know exactly if the pericardial effusion was already there or not. And you can look at this mitral valve. We have a big heart, big ventricles, both right and left are dilated. And this mitral valve, you can tell right away that it struggles to close because the leaflet are just pulled down tether from the dilated left ventricle. And uh, uh, if we uh, go further in our examination, this is a mitral commissural view. You can see that from the center of the commissure, there is a pretty bright jet that um, sort of comes centrally and like shoots towards the uh, roof of the, of the left atrium. This is a, a mitral commissural view and next plane, or also what we what we call the um, <clears throat> the, the the view that we most uh, commonly use for uh, grasping of the leaflets, and you can see and you can further appreciate the tethering of both anterior and posterior leaflet, which characterize uh, this as a, a, a mitral regurgitation type 3B according to the Carpentier classification. The annulus was also dilated about four, uh, 40 uh, millimeters and uh, the leaflets were normal length. The posterior leaflet was, uh, was actually 17 millimeters. And um, uh, these actually are characteristics that um, we're going to be taken into consideration for um, pre to predict how difficult it's going to be to clip this valve. We look at 3D, we love it, unfast view, and we confirm the mechanism of mitral regurgitation. You can see that there is a big gap in the center of the valve with a centrally directed jet with a pretty bright but a very central jet. And if we go back to what we discussed uh, in the first talk, if we're looking at optimal morphology, challenging or unsuitable morphology, we have all of the characteristic of the optimal morphology. The regurgitation is in the center. There's no calcification. The annulus is big enough. The leaflet open without problems. The posterior leaflet is more than 11 millimeter. The tenting height in this case was about one, one centimeter. The leaflet, as we said, they move normally. The only uh, element that, that uh, poses for uh, challenging morphologies that is Carpentier type, type 3B. And the flail gap or flail leaflet in this case are not to be taken into consideration because it's a restricted valve. So everything poses for a good valve to clip. And our cardiologist decided to attempt to uh, clip this valve uh, with a uh, NT wide, so a small clip, but wider than sort of the basic model. And, um, and that's what we, we decided to do. So we start with, uh, with, pun with puncture. And here we were quite satisfied with the position, the, the puncture, the indentation, you can see here on the left is superior in the fossa ovalis. 
and it's posterior. So that's exactly where we want it to be. Uh, and this, uh, in this case, what happened is what unfortunately happened to me very often with our cardiologists who have no patients. I didn't get a chance to measure the distance from the mitral valve that they were already through the, the interatrial septum. So once they were through the interatrial septum, the catheter was passed through and you can see the catheter on the right and here is the delivery catheter. On the left, you see that the delivery catheter, the, the dilator from the delivery catheter is already in the left atrium. And now the delivery catheter is just making its way through the interatrial septum. So this is a, one of the most uh, um, dangerous steps of this procedure because here, is where the cardiologist, they are trying to push this delivery catheter into the atrium. They have very little control. And we need to uh, focus not on the interatrial septum, but we need to focus on the interatrial septum and on the tip of this dilator, because if they push too hard and too fast, what we can do is with the dilator, we can actually injure the left, uh, the left atrial wall. On the right, the catheter has been passed through the septum and we're sort of happy with the position and we advance our clip. You can see the clip comes in and now the clip, we need to be able to follow and see the clip all the time. And in this case, you can see that the clip is like hitting the, um, uh, hitting the wall of the left atrium here on the left here. Yeah, you can see the tip is hitting the leaflet. We need to tell the cardiologist, say, guys, uh, be careful. And now they started bending the clip down and now the clip is coming above the mitral valve. So the clip is in position. We want to uh, try to, to position the clip because this is a central jet right in the middle of P2 and A2. We look with 3D and you can see that here the clip is a little bit too, on the left, the clip is a little bit too lateral and the clip is a little bit, uh, so one hour, counterclockwise rotated as we wanted it to be. So we reposition the clip. Yeah, as you can see on the right, we move it more medially and we give it a little clockwise tilt. And now the clip is in a pretty good position. We're ready to dive. So we go through the valve and what we normally do at this point is we stop the ventilation. And as, uh, as I was telling before, we use this Emil concept. So if we want to do, if we want to be more lateral, we give less PIP. If we want to be more medial, we want to, we give, we give more PIP. So the clip is under the valve and you can see that the leaflet are just in the right position to engage with the arms of the valve of the clip. Uh, and you can see that uh, we have the short, the short axis of the clip. So the, the short profile of the clip on the left and the long profile of the clip on the right. And we can clearly see the clip with all the arms and all the, uh, and the graspers on the clip very well on the right side of the screen. Now that we're under the, under the valve, we want to control again our clocking. And you can see that on the left side, so we decrease the gain to see through the valve. We see the clip and we weren't so happy because now the valve, the clip is a little bit rotated clock, clockwise at like one and seven o'clock. I wanted more of 12 and six o'clock. And that's why we, uh, we reoriented the clip here. We reoriented the clip at, as you can see here on the right at 12 and six o'clock. Now we are through the clip, we grasp the leaflet and we, we, we close the grippers and you can see that you start to see tension on this leaflet. And now as we make, as we make and we close the, 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 valve, the clip completely, on the right, you can see that the leaflet have even more tension. So they move even less. That's exactly what we're looking for. So we're looking for a good tension on the leaflet. That means that the leaflets are well grasped from the, from the clip and they are, um, and, and are we're, we're, and they're pulled together from this uh, little device. Now we control, we check, for, we check for residual regurgitation and I usually go back to 2D without explain, turn on the color because with 2D and color, I have a way higher temporal resolution as I have with the explain and color because explain is already at the lower temporal resolution or frame rate as 2D. And now if I add color, I drop my temporal resolution further. 
I also need to measure a gradient. Here, the mean gradient was one. And so we look again with 3D and also with 3D, we confirm that there's no residual regurgitation. We've grasped this leaflet right in the middle. The clip is exactly where we want it to be. It's sta stable, we can release it. And then the clip is here released. What's important to do is not, we don't have enough. We need to always check after we've released the clip because the post final position of the clip, we have it only when the clip is released because in, uh, also, always when the clip is still attached to the leaf, to the delivery catheter, the clip is pulled and then it can still move uh, 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 in, in a with a different angle. And sometimes we've been very surprised to find uh, a jet that wasn't there before, just after the clip is released. So that was sort of an example of a good result with a typical patient who comes with secondary ischemic matter regurgitation, and we get the good job, good job done with one clip. Our second case is a little bit more complex. Although this patient was not as sick as the first patient, we have now a 76 years old female with uh, New York Heart Association uh, two. She has dyspnea uh, at exertion and a, uh, a, a normal ejection fraction and minimal comorbidities um, and severe mitral regurgitation. So the patient comes for a clip and we look at this heart and the only thing that's comparable to the previous heart that also this patient has a little bit of uh, a little bit of um, uh, pericardial effusion that you can see here, but what you see is a completely different mitral valve. So now there is a big jet that we can see also in a four chamber view, but both leaflets are actually prolapsing. So this is a completely different mechanism of mitral regurgitation. And as we go to our matra commissurer view, we can confirm uh, that there is a, a bileaflet prolapse and there is a bright regurgitant jet in the matra commissurer view and a central regurgitant jet in the, uh, in the long axis view. Uh, these are the measurement of the annulus, which wasn't particularly big. Um, and um, when we look at 3D though, there is a, the, there is a Barlow's looking valve with a prolapse, not only of the P2 and A2 segment, but, uh, but also the A1 is prolapsing with the anterior commissure and the um, uh, posterior medial commissure is also sort of involved by this pathology, although the main jet comes from the center of the valve. So uh, we did 3D reconstruction. We look at the cross-sectional area, that uh, 3D cross-sectional, vena contracta cross-sectional area that was uh, 0.47 centimeter square. And now if we look at this table, we have a bit more characteristics that make it more challenging than the previous case. And that's the reason for given the degree of prolapse and given the amount of leaflet and the, 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 how big this leaflet were and how bright the gap was. So our cardiologist decided to start with an XT uh, clip wide. So a big clip that was actually um, so a, a big clip that was uh, that was uh, sort of in the in the thicker version. So uh, septal puncture here again, where we're sort of relatively happy with the long axis view. Uh, sorry, the bicaval view, and now we measure in the four chamber view and the height from the mitral valve leaflets to where the the indentation is. It's, it's, it's just over five centimeters. We said between four and five is what we're looking for. So we went ahead, we, we positioned our delivery catheter, and now we can see in 3D where the delivery catheter is and where the uh, posterior commissure of this valve is. So the delivery catheter falls right on top of the posterior medial commissure, which is what we are actually looking for. So we advance one clip, we look at this clip, see where the clip goes, and now the clip is above the valve. And um, we uh, uh, decided to go through the valve. And as we go through the valve, we have a clip that's now sitting almost in the middle of, uh, of P2 uh, and A2. I would have asked our cardiologist at this point to maybe rotate the clip a little bit counterclockwise. What we decided to do is, yeah, we rotated the clip and now we try to get the leaflet in. We have a, a very good positioning of the leaflet. We've advanced the probe a little bit in, 
in order to have a better picture of the leaflet and the, and the grasping and the grasping system and the graspers as well as the arms of the clip. And you can see that this is what usually happens when the leaflets are well inside the graspers is that as the in systole, the, the, the leaflet, especially when we have this big barlow's valve with long leaflets, is that in systole, the leaflet would push the graspers up. Yeah, you can see as it happens here. So we, we close the clip and now we look at the results. And in 2D, you can see here with color that we, we have a relatively big jet that's more medial to the clip. And there's still a small jet that it's lateral to the clip. So here we started to think, well, maybe this is not the right strategy. We're not gonna get away here with just one clip. So what we decided to do then is move the clip a bit more medially. And now we grasp the leaflet again, we close the clip, we look again, and we definitely have a bigger regurgitant jet lateral, but we still have a medial regurgitant jet. So then we decided to then open the clip again and then regrasp and go way more medial. So once we've done that, we grasp the leaflet, we close the clip, we look at the uh, color and you see that the medial jet is pretty much completely gone. So we are at the very edge of P2. Uh, and so we decided that this was actually a pretty good result for the first clip. So we measured the gradient. The gradient is two millimeters of mercury. And so we decided to then go ahead and position a second clip. So we now advance the second clip and the second clip now is to sit uh, on the lateral to the first clip. The, the, the clip goes through, we stop the ventilation and we open the clip and now we grasp the leaflet. You see on the left, the leaflet are going inside the graspers. We make the gra we close the graspers and you can see here how um, the leaflets are moving the graspers up and down. What is uh, what you may appreciate here is that it's it's always it's sometimes challenging with a second clip to um, have a good visualization of the clip and also with our uh, with our scanning plane with the secondary plane when as we move like sometimes we think we're looking at the second clip we're actually looking at the first clip so but here we were actually satisfied so then we uh, sort of close the clip. We look at with color and there's barely any uh, matter regurgitation. We look at, we measure the gradient again. It was two before, now it's four. So in four, between four and five, that's the maximum that we are accepting. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's sort of on the border of what we normally accept, but it's still an acceptable uh, gradient for this valve. Uh, another option to assess the stability and the insertion of the leaflets, uh, especially when you have more than one clip or when you have a, 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 a difficult angle with which, with which to align your planes is you can use multi-view. Multi so in this case, we use multi-view and with multi-view, we align the, 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 the yellow, sorry, the red and the green plane along the clip. And... Um, so you can see that now the, the clip on the, we can see the clip on the right here and we can very well see the insertion of this two leaflet. We've released the clip and now this is the, the, the second clip here. And we're now looking again at the insertion of the second clip on the leaflet on the second clip. And this is sort of a very good results that that's what we were looking for. When we look at uh, in 2D, we can appreciate now both your clips, they are moving together with these, uh, with, these, with, with these big bulky leaflets. There is still trace to mild um, regurgitation that you can appreciate there. Um, and we sort of accepted it as a good final results. What it's always important to look at and never forget about it is uh, to look at the residual ASD. So in this case, we pull the catheter out we look at the interatrial septum, and as you can see, there is a, a regurgitate, there is a flow through the interatrial septum, and uh, the catheter went also sort of transversal, sort of a bit of a sideways through the interatrial septum. And uh, here you have sort of a, a jet that's going uh, left to right. Uh, uh, normally, when we have a left to right shunt, we leave it as it is, we don't do anything about it. 
and we only uh, consider closing an interatrial septal defect when we have elevated right-sided pressures and now we have desaturation because of uh, right to left shunt. So as tips for successful uh, uh, mitra, uh, mitra clip, mitra clip in insertion, implantation, uh, uh, you need to optimize our views. The better the views are, the quicker our cardiologists are going to be and the more precise and successful they're going to be. Optimize the imaging means um, um, also sometimes uh, uh, look at the position of our probe in respect to the clip on fluoroscopy and sometimes and try to go under the clip in order to avoid the shadow from the delivery catheter. When you use 3D, we can play with the gain and playing with the gain allow us to see through the valve. So when the clip is underneath the valve, if we drop the gain completely, now we don't see the leaflet, but we do see, no, we still see the clip. And then finally, uh, for those of us who have this option, uh, multi-view is also another modality to assess the insertion of the leaflets on the clip. And we do that from, we take a 3D block of the mitral valve, and then we play with our angle, with our panel, with our planes, and we align it to the clip and we can see very well the insertion of the, uh, of the leaflets in the clip. One, our cardiologists don't like it very much because as you can appreciate, as you use multi-view, the resolution of your 2D images on multi-view is not as good as the resolution of your 2D images using 2D or, or X-Plane. Thank you very much for, for listening. Uh, this is my email. You can email, you always email me. Come visit us anytime and uh, connect with us for um, our um, upcoming perioperative TE masterclass that's coming next June. There's going to be lots of uh, um, transcatheter procedure broadcasted live from ROR, and you'll have the opportunity to interact with, um, with us and uh, the guest speakers that are coming from all over the world. Thanks again, and um, I hope to see you next year in person. Bye-bye.